《中国空间站》天宫课堂第三课。欢迎同学们的到来。Welcome you all. And today for the main class is located in a very special place. This is the the load center of the CSU. So I'm Song Lei. I'm from the Technology and Engineering Center for Space Utilization, Chinese Academy of Science. My name is Bai Ye. I'm from Peking University Affiliated Middle School. And today we will have our tackle notes to provide lectures to you all. And together with us, we also have three different classes. They are located in Shandong, Henan, and the Yunnan province. So for Shandong, Hezhe is also the hometown for the pioneer, and also the class is located in number one middle school of Hezhe. And for the Henan class is located in the Technology Museum, and also for the Yunnan province, the class is located in the New Century Middle School. So in the main class, we have students from around Beijing. Please say hi to the students in other places. Dear students, so you can see that it's full of technology in our main class. This is place where Mr. Sun works. So you just talk about this place is a load center. What does that mean? As we talk about the load, we are talking about we have some load uh, in the aerospace, and for some of this load, they are actually providing scientific support. And uh, also we have the ground station to monitor the sp space missions. This is also a core place for us. So every day for our engineer and scientists, they are actually managing some of the projects carrying out in the outer space. So in this place is actually the headquarters of the laboratory. There were so many functions in this place. When I first stepped inside of this place, when I looked at all of this information, I was quite impressed. Yes, I believe all of you have been aware that in the big screen, you could see the parameters for some of the equipment in our space station. And also we have different positions, occupations. For example, we have the monitors. They will monitor the situation of the equipment in the space station. And also we will upload some of the information and instructions to the space. And also we will have dialogue and communication with the Taikonauts. All of us work together to maintain and promote the application of all the programs. In the past, actually, Tiangong is the place for all of the legends. And uh, today, we will continue to explore the unknown mysteries in the space. So this is how we work today. On June the 5th, Chen Dong, Liu Yang, and the Cai Xu Zhe, the three Taikonauts, took Shenzhou 14 and entered into Tiangong, and also they are entering into the Tian, Tianhe Core module, and also they are receiving the Wentian Lab module on July the 24th. And actually today the class will take place from the Wentian Lab module. So first I would like to introduce the Wentian Lab module. So for the Wentian Lab module, the length it's quite high. It's, a, it's about like 17.9 meters. The diameter is 4.2 meters, and the takeoff weight is 23 tons. So for all these lab modules, composed of working module, airlock chamber, and the resource module, actually it is the first lab module in China Space Station. It will provide a lot of support for our missions carried out in the space. So Mr. Song just gave us some basics about the Wentian lab module. And also we have a lot of experiment cabinets. For example, we have the variable gravity science lab cabinet, the scientific glove box, and the experiment cabinet for biotechnology, and also the experiment cabinet for the life ecology. And this will help us to learn more about different programs and projects. And later the technologists will show us more about this cabinet. So for the experiment cabinets, actually concentrates a lot of wisdom from the scientists. So for each one of the cabinets, they could come here as one separate 
great laboratory. So actually for each one of them, it's quite small, it's less than like 2 cubic meters. It could support different types of research. And also for the Taikonauts, they could do a variety of experiments in the cabinet. This is quite amazed for all different kinds of lab cabinets. So think about it, why we want to bring all of these laboratory cabinets into the space? The boy on the first row. In the space, actually the environment is quite special, it's micro gravity and also it has the radiation. The environment is quite unique. We could see phenomena that we are not able to see on the ground. So that's why for the scientists, they would like to learn more about this phenomenon and they do want to have more achievements. Well said. Yes, indeed. Because in the um, space, the environment is quite different, especially I would like to emphasize it is microgravity. In this, on the Earth, so we could feel the gravity, but in the space, we are not able to see the gravity. So that's why in the past uh, two lectures, we are seeing different kinds of experiments. For example, we are able to see the beautiful blue ball and also the beautiful liquid bridge. And for the scientists, they could compare the phenomena on Earth and in the space. So we are trying to add in or remove some of the elements to do the scientific work. And that is the way how we conduct all of these programs. Can you give us some example about the variable conditions? I believe you taste different kinds of vegetables. So for the vegetables, they grow in different conditions. So for example, in some of the vegetables, they are able to grow in dark places where others require sunlight. So we are able to control the sunlight condition to affect the growth of the vegetables. So of course, later on, we will show you more experiments. So this sounds very interesting. For these vegetables, they taste quite different. Maybe this is because some of them receive sunlight and some of them are not able to receive sunlight. I think if you're able to grow some of the vegetables in the space, uh, maybe you're able to taste the flavor of the gravity. Actually, for the Earth, we have the uh, oxygen and also we have the sunlight. And in the space, it is in the microgravity environment, maybe we're able to grow vegetables in a different way. So how to bring the vegetables into space? I think this is very important mission for us. So this is very important for us to learn more about the life ecology. For the scientists, they actually done a lot to learn how the vegetables grow in the space. Some people may send out samples to the space, such as the wheat and also the rice. At the beginning, people pay attention to the survival and the development of the seed. And later on, they would like to have some intervention to breed better seeds. However, for some of the uh, uh, vegetables, they may have a latency for the flowering, and the scientists need to find out more methods to breed uh, better plants. I believe this time for um, Wen Tian, he actually bring two types of the vegetables into the space. One is the Arabidopsis and the one is rice. And for the scientists, they would like to bring two uh, representative plants into the space. And this will uh, better help us to do the research and scientific studies. So by doing that for the scientists, they could understand uh, the differences of the growing and the planting procedures. So for the arabidosis and the wheat, there are two different types of the uh, 
uh, plants. Uh, so for the arabidosis, it is a kind of crucifery, and for the wheat, it could represent crops. And actually, this is kind of a short day um, plant. So what are some of the missions by these two plants? So let's see how the scientists say about these two plants. Hello to students. My name is Zhong Huitu, starting from 2002. My team has utilized the a cargo ship and also the core module to study the higher plants growth. So we would like to look into how the environment impacts the growth and development of the plants. And based on our study, it seems like, yes, indeed, the environment impact a lot. We look at the uh, macrogravity, so the uh, direction actually changed because there is no the upward or downward growth. And that's because of the macrogravity. And also we're looking at the a uh, flowering time and also the a uh, seedling timing is all changed. So in order to better understand the uh, rules and laws behind. So this time we select the gene. So we actually designed the three flooring time for DA Arabidopsis. So that's the a before the scheduled time flooring and on time flooring and delayed time flooring. So we look into these comparative studies and we would like to conclude to the result about the inflorescence. And this is also the first time we bring the eight seed to seed growth of rice to the space. So going forward, we'd like to utilize the results we got this time from Arabidosis and rice. So hope that we can study the second and also the third generation of the a space grown seeds, study the seed to seed growth and also to look into the a behind the a genomic sequencing and also the gene impact and also we can also improve the efficiency of the space crops. Thank you, Madam Zhao. So we talk about like flooring actually is really closely related to the gene expression. And also by changing the uh, one factor in the gene sequencing, we could see that the different timing of flooring of arabidosis in space. So keep your eyes close to all these arabidosis and also look into these comparative studies. Well, on ground, on September 9th, we also grow a seed on the earth, on ground. We actually received the same or identical seed on ground. So we grow our seed on ground and also later on, maybe we can compare to the seed growing in space. Growing the same seed, we also grow the same dream of hope. So let's work together to record the growth of the seed from the very beginning of the germination to growth to development. So during this time period, students took special care of all these seedlings and during the whole process, they spent a lot of efforts to look into the a growth and so they have the questions and also they set their the hypothesis and try to look at the answers. And today the students actually bring their plants to this main venue and hope that we can compare the plants between Earth and space. So a tiny seed actually unveils the secrets of space. And also our technonauts are ready to bring us to the universe of the mysteries. So now we are ready. Let's again warm up clouds to welcome our three technonauts.
There's no end to unveil the mysterious of space. Hello, class. My name is Chen Dong, commander of Shenzhou 14. We are very happy in our Ventian Live module to continue our journey to unveiling the universe. Hello to you. My name is Liu Yang. Looking forward to today's lecture. Hello, I'm Cai Xuzhe. And during today's class, I'll be the cameraman. So follow my camera to enjoy the beauty of the space. And this is our third class. So I believe that you waited for a very long time. So finally, today, we change a classroom continue our journey. So before we start our class, Liu Yang and I will first give you a little bit tour about our new classroom. And by the way, this is our Wen Tian Life module. Let's check this out. Wen Tian Live module. This is our very first live module. It has the a complete the a live supporting system and also the a facilities we need every day. And this is our living and sleeping module, and this also provide additional beds for the astronauts and technonauts coming to the space. So inside Wen Tian module, so our sleeping quarters direction actually different from core module. So it's in horizontal in the core module, but here is in vertical direction. And of course, you cannot sleep in this direction on Earth. But right now, we are in a microgravity. So any direction will feel the same. So by the design purpose, we can to arrange different direction our sleeping banks. So let's moving forward. I'm floating to this living area. So here you can find our kitchen. You can see the live microwave and the a drinking tablet, and also similar as we have in the core module. And on the other side, this is what we move from core module, and this is our cycle, our back here. In front of our special designed back, that's the a hiding place. So so far you could understand that the A Lab module actually can provide the A Live support systems for the technonauts and also equipped with complete control management system. And if the core module actually encounters some emergency, then the A Wen Tian Live module can serve as the full backup to the space station's key systems. So, so far we know that there is a sleeping quarters, a living areas, kitchens, and now coming to the key part of the live module, that's the work space. So you know that we have that the cabinet, and also in the previous lecture, we introduced some of the uh, cabins, cabinets to our students, and also look at what we have this time. We actually have some new ones on board the a Wen Tian Lab module. We have a glove boxes at the top. So later on, we will select samples of plants. So these glove boxes provide a very clean and sealed place. So we can make sure that our experiment can be controlled and also in a very simple manner. So later on, we'll also have a very the, a tiny robotic arm to help us to assist the experiments and also later on we can also do the precise 
the AX operation. So that help us to conduct the operation on the cell level. And at the bottom, that is a refrigerator with temperature as low as minus 80 degrees Celsius. And this also help to store samples. So we can also change the temperature to minus 2 degrees and to minus 40 degrees as well. And here, this is our life science and ecology experiment cabinet. And this is a platform to conduct the experiment on single objects. You could see that divided into different units or in different rooms. Different rooms actually specialize for different objects. It's kind of like a hotel room for different animals and the plant. So the results we got here that can actually provide the, a foundation for us to stay a longer time period in space, even in Mars. So think about that. Later on, we will also look at the uh, Arab doses. So which room stays? Please stay tuned. And look at this black box. And this is the a radiator meters to help us to measure the radiation level. So help us to put a close eye on the a radiation level in the cabin. Now we move to another cabinet. So for this one, it's actually the uh, experiment cabinet for the biotechnology. It will focus on the uh, protein analysis and also the cells and tissue analysis. We have many equipments inside of this cabinet. So this is also a mini lab in the space. So earlier, Ye Guangfu have gave us some introduction about the cell studies. So for this cabinet, it will help us to learn more about the microorganisms. On my right hand side, it is the um, variable gravity experiment cabinet. So this will provide uh, different levels of the gravity. Let's take a look at this cabinet. So inside of the cabinet, we have two round discs. These are the turners. And for each one of them, they are equipped with different units. So we could use all of these units separately or use it all together. So for this one, we are talking about um, the centrifugal force. So we are able to provide the gravity environment. By using these experimental gravities, we are able to provide different kinds of experiments related to the biotechnology, gravity effects, and also the fluid items. So this is the introduction. Any questions? Any questions? Good afternoon. I'm from the affiliated middle school from the Chinese Academy of Science. So right now we're able to see different kinds of experimental cabinets in the space. I was quite impressed. So I'm quite interested about the microgravity fluid cabinet. So my question is why we want to do a lot of experiments about the flu studies. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So for fluid, it is very essential in our daily life. It is the same for the construction for the China's space station. For the space station, you could see we are having this microgravity environment. So in such an environment,
the movement of the fluid is quite different as of the ground. Water is a very common scene fluid, and in the past two lectures, we are able to show you some of the magical movement of the water, and also we are using some of the fluid field for the carrier rocket in the microgravity environment, the movement of the fluid is quite different here. So if we use the fluid the same way as we did on the Earth, this must create a lot of problems. Now I would like to show you another experiment so that you could better understand the difference. So this is the container. We are pu I am putting some of the um, pigment, so now I'm using different kinds, different shape of the tubes, and now I would like to put the tube inside of the container. Shall it be the same? So before I do this experiment, please try it. Let's see what happened on Earth. All right, now I'm able to see some of the results. Now you could see um, the water is rising, the liquid is flowing. Now it's my turn. Pay attention to this experiment. So just look at this one, it rises very fast, it rises to the top, so for the other two tubes, now you could see the water rises very slow, actually in the space, Without the impact of the gravity, now you could see we have a stronger surface tension, and this will drive the liquid flowing upwards. So in the end, for all of the liquid, they will float to the top of the tube. This is also because of the impact of the surface tension. Now for this one, you can see it is quite wider, but um, the liquid is able to reach to the top. So this experiment seems very simple, but there are many principles behind it. So for the scientists, they have to learn more. And also they have to learn these principles to resolve some of the problems. For example, for some of the uh, combustion system and also the power system for the aircraft, we have to use this kind of the capillary phenomenon. And for some of the liquid, if they um, vibrate fiercely, this will actually have some danger for the engine of the aircraft. Now I would like to show you another experiment to see how we mitigate the vibration. So this is the water ball we have made earlier. So let's see the vibration of the liquid and the liquid solid mixture under the same impact in microgravity environment. So first, I would like to push in some of the air just take a look. We do see a very fierce vibration. But how to mitigate the impact of the vibration? Now I would like to put a hollow iron ball inside of, what, of the water ball. Let's see what happened. For the steel ball, it enters into the water ball, but it feels like uh, for this water ball, it could pull back the steel ball. Now I would like to do it again to push in some of the air. Now you can see we are able to mitigate the vibration. It feels like the water ball is getting lazy. Now I would like to do it again.
So for this experiment, when we are adding the steel ball, it actually changed the movement of the vibration of the liquid. Just think about it. Why this happens? Can we use this principle for some of the application in our daily life? Now I'm actually getting a little bit of thirsty. Now I would like to show you how I drink water in space. In Earth, we use quite short a straw to drink the water. But if you have very long straw, it takes you some effort to get the water. But today I would like to use a two meter long straw to drink the water. Have a guess. Let's see if I can drink the water successfully. Yes, I got it. It's a very easy task for me. It's a mango juice. On Earth, because of gravity, we use a straw to drink water. So you need to spend a lot of efforts if you dip through a long straw. But here, the gravity is gone. So just by a very easy effort, I can use this crazy long straw to drink the juice. So here I am here. So besides the previous two experiments that stick capillarity in space and vibration of a liquid and liquid solid mixture in space. Here we come to another experiment. So this is a T handle that's a we use it a lot in space. Let's see when we spin it. Let's spin the smaller one. So look at this, right? It's tumble and over and. So you could see that it spin around and flip back and forth. So let's try another one. So look at this color and. So you could see that sometimes you could see that the right dots look it closely. You could see sometimes on the left, you send that turn to the right and then back to the left side. See that? So let's try these two together to see the similarity and differences. All right, you could see that they have a different gesture of rotation, right? But they are very naughty ones. So we look at that's a tumbling T handle, but think about this. What's the reason behind? Why T handle is dancing and also flowing and over and? So let's see if we rotate this direction, it's very stable, right? It's not really tumble and over and. Let's turn this way. Can you see this? So right now it's flip back and forth. So this is called the a Johnny Beckhoff effect. So it's named after a Russian astronaut. So this is what we see that because of the a distribution of mass and also the a rotation axis. So this is very hard to achieve on ground, but it's just a normal phenomena we see in space. It's not finished yet. Let me show you another one. So for this object, if we rotate it, think about this. And this is your homework, and you can tag the answer after the lecture. 
同学们，空间站为我们提供了长期微重力环境。So the host space station provides the a microgravity environment, and we can observe something different from the Earth. So it also can help us to understand the scientific law and the rules. So besides all these very interesting phenomena. We also work together with experts and scientists to understand the reason behind. So back to Shenzhou 11, actually, you actually plant the a cabbage in Tiangong too. So yes, we actually plant the seed and also to have the close eye on its growth development. And also coming to the harvest. So not long ago, we also enjoyed a cabbage plant by Mr. Tai Xu Zhe. So that's the lettuce. It's very tasty lettuce, and we actually enjoy that during the a middle middle autumn festival. And what else we have here? We have rice. It's looking very nice. So talking about plants. So to plant, hope you still can remember that not long ago we plant and grow the seed of herbidosis. Let's check what we got here. So before we check our homework in space, let me check your homework on Earth. So maybe I call out students in Yunnan. So anyone can answer the question that given by her taikunat. Hello. My name is Mei Ziyan from the Dali New Century Middle School, Grade Six. So we actually had the a comparative studies of the a early doses, and we record every day. So let me report to you what we got here so far. So three days after growing, the control group and the a scientific group, the we could see that the seedling is a very tiny, small one. But after ten days, you could see that the scientific group first grows four leaves. It's faster than. The control group, and also on the third of the. October, and we actually see the very small white flower. But actually, the aerodosis in the control group has not really seen the flower yet. So we could see that the a what we got in the, the scientific experiment group that's the a early flowering aerodosis. So that's very interesting, and we hope to understand the whole seed-to-seed -seed growth of Arabidopsis. Very nice. Well done. So you could be a scientist later on in the future. I'm very glad to also tell you that the Arabidopsis here in space is also looking good, and you could see this. Picture, and this is what we recorded early on, and also today we also together to take some samples of the herbidopsis, and we put in the glove boxes, and later on we will store samples and will be brought back to Earth for further analysis. So let me put the glasses on. So you could see this is the a very first MR glasses. So with the glasses, I can finish the sample collection in a very safe and efficient way. So you could see that right now I provide you with this angle. So this you could see that we have this the a FPV, and you could see that here you could see six holes, 
and number three and number four, uh, the Arabic dopsis, we could see that already flowering, but here, number one, two, not coming to the flowering stage yet. And also could see the other epidopsis, also in a very small size. So first, let me take a photo, take a picture. Take a picture and send the picture. Display the screen. Display the guide. All right, all the toolkits are ready. Hide the screen. Now I'm able to pick some of these aerobidosis. First, I would like to open the cover. Use a scissors. I will start from this one. Put the cover back. So all right, this is one of the sample of the aerobidosis. So after the class, I will continue to pick the samples. And also I will put it into the low temperature storage box. So after I get all the samples, I will put it into the storage cabin with minus Celsius 80 degree. And then I will bring all of the samples to the scientists on the ground. Talking about the aerobidosis, actually I have a story to share with you. In Tiangong 2, actually it is me who bring all of these samples back to the Earth. Hopefully this time we're able to see more research results. Dear students, so in this cabinet of the life ecology, also, we are raising and breathing another type of plant, which is the rice. Now I would like to show you where are the rice. Just take a look. With over 70 days of breeding, now you can see uh, for all of these seeds, they are turning into plants. One of the objectives for the breeding is that we want to uh, seed a seed-to-seed -seed life cycle of the rice. In this box, now you can see two types of rice, the growing rice and the dwarf rice. During the raising of the rice, we may see something different. Right at the beginning, we are able to see some of the water drops on the leaves of the rice. And also for these droplets, they will get bigger and then they will stick to the box. So actually, this is what we call the guttation. In the microgravity environment, we are able to see this kind of phenomenon. Now you could see so many droplets of the water on the wall of this box. 
So I want to ask you questions. So when you are raising the rice, are you able to see this phenomenon of gutation? Why you don't see so many water droplets, but in the space station, we could see this phenomenon? This is your homework. So in August, we start to raise the rice and the wheat, and in October, we're able to see the harvest. We're expecting that in the future, we're able to get more crops in the space station. I hope in the near future, in the moon and in Mars, we're able to grow more crops. But this is your mission in the future. For all of these samples, they are treasures for the space station, and also this is because of the efforts for all the taikonauts. And today we're able to see a lot of harvest of the crops, and at the same time, I believe uh, you're able to learn a lot of knowledge. So that is the lecture part. Now it's the Q&A session. Feel free to ask the questions. I believe all of you have a lot of questions to ask. So first, I would like to give the floor to uh, the classroom in Beijing. Any questions? The girl on the third row. Good afternoon. I'm from Renda Affiliated Middle School. You just talked about that for the uh, experiment cabinet for ecology is actually the hotel for the plants. So what are some of the plants coming to this hotel in the future? Thank you for your question. I would like to take your question. When I carry my mission in Shenzhou 11, I'm able to raise wool, silk wool. They are quite lovely. And right now in the space station, it is more advanced and developed. And this time, we're able to grow the aerobic doses and the rice. And uh, in the future, we are able to grow the zebra fish. And I believe um, they will adapt to this environment. And also, we're able to monitor the temperature and humidity in all of these boxes. And we are able to take photos and also to make some videos of all of these uh, creatures so that for people from the Earth, they understand the conditions for these plants. That must be very interesting. Thank you. Now I would like to invite students from Shandong to ask the question. Now is the Q&A session. Please raise your question. Good afternoon. I'm from Hezhe Number One Middle School. Shen, I want to ask you a question. In the space, we don't have direction. We cannot feel the gravity. But why the root of the arabidosis and the rice could still settle in the space? Maybe I will take the question. First of all, thank you for your question. Very interesting indeed. In the space station, even though we don't have any gravity, however, for the root, they could grow inside of the soil. This because for all of these plants, they grow towards gravity and moisture. So in the soil, it is full of moisture and the water. So that's why during the germination period, for the seed of the rice and the arabidosis, they will grow towards the gravity. 
So for the stem and also the root, maybe they will not grow in the same direction. All right. Any more questions from Shandong? We still have the opportunity to ask the question. Good afternoon. I'm from Hezhe Number One Middle School in Zhenghan. My question is that for the life cycle of the plants in space, is this any difference as compared to the Earth? I believe when you are growing the arabidosis, you may come up with this question. Maybe Mr. Tsai can answer your question. This is a very interesting question. In the space, we are in the microgravity environment. It may have a lot of impact for the development and the growing of the plants. For the scientists, they have done a lot of experiments. So under microgravity environment, it will affect the life cycle of the plants. For example, Chen Dong has just mentioned that for some of the um, plants, they may be late, and for other kind of plants, they may grow slowly inside of the space cabinet. However, they tend to live longer. This is also quite interesting to observe. Now let's turn over to Henan province to see if the students have any questions. Any questions? Please raise your hand. Hello to all the Taekwonauts. My name is Mao Yuanyuan. My question is, uh, to grow plants, can the plants receive enough the a sunlight? That's the a light provided by the lights inside the cabinet or the natural light? So this question remind me that we also not enjoyed sunshine for quite a long time. I invite Miss Liu to answer your question. All right, I believe this is the question a lot of students may also have. So you could see that a lot of the plants are actually in the a cabinet, right? So they cannot enjoy the natural sunlight. But here we have the ambient light or the lab light. We can change the a spectrum of lights to fulfill the requirements of the growth and development of the plant. And also the scientists scientist also provide and design the different conditions of a light based on the growth needs of the plant. Although right now we cannot enjoy the natural light, but I believe with the development of the science and technology, maybe in the near future, we can use the natural light to cultivate the plant. I believe that you could provide an answer to this question. I believe the answer may be from you. Maybe another question from Henan. I would like to know the mechanic clock and also atom clock. So work the same in Earth and in space, and is the a microgravity affect anything in space? That's another very interesting question. 
Let me take this question. For, you could see that the electronic watch uh, operates smoothly and normally. When you talk about that mechanical watch that still operates, it depends on what type. So we could see that if that's the uh, use the a uh, pendulum, then that cannot work because that's rely on the a uh, gravity. So that could not work. But to give you a the a uh, spoiler that later on we will install a cold atom watch. Later on we will also arrive in the core module with. Mengtian lab module. Uh, previously, actually, we had that the a, a code atom clock that also provides the extreme accuracy of timing, and also this time we also used improved a, a code atom clock. So we also with a lot of anticipation. So that will provide ultra high provision of timing. So let's turn to Yunnan. Any questions? Hello, this is Sri Takunats. I'm from Xiaguan Middle School. My name is Zhang Beixi. My question is, in space station, can you feel that turbulence? And also, can you see the other? The satellites? So maybe I let me take your question. So when you take vehicles, the trains or cars or airplanes, of course there is the a turbulence, right? But in space, there's no gravity, and there's also no the airflow. And also in addition, we have a CMG installed. So it could provide a very stable environment for us, so we cannot really feel the uh, turbulence. So talk about other... The a uh, space vehicle, so for the different space vehicle or spacecraft, they have a different designated orbit. So it's very hard to just rely on the a uh, bare eyes to observe the other vehicles. But we know actually in ISS, we also have colleagues working there. And we explore the universe and try to benefit the human beings with our hard work. So maybe another question from Yunnan. Hello. My name is Chen Shu Han from Dali. So, how many colors can you see about Earth from the a space and what is the most beautiful color? All right, let me take your question. I really like your question. We orbit the Earth in every 90 minutes. So, from our angle, the a color of the planet actually is not in the fixed colors. So, when the orbit in the sunny side, we could see a yellow, that's the soil color. We could see also the white color, that's the snow-capped mountain. And also could see the color of the desert, the color of the ocean. 
We also could see that the clouds as well. But when in the, the a sh shade part, we could see that the a light of the cities that highlighted the beauty of our planet. So you talk about the most beautiful color for myself. I like the a color that sometimes that's in golden color, some is in blue or sometimes in purple. That's the atmospheric glow. That's very, very beautiful. So I really like that air glow color. So that's our cameraman in space. He actually have taken a lot of beautiful pictures later on. He maybe also share with our students. Could be another question from Beijing. Good afternoon. I'm from Beijing. My question is, in April last year, I heard that we started the recruitment of the fourth batch of the Techonauts. So what should I do to become a qualified Techonaut? Thank you. I'm so glad to hear such a question. So I hope today for the Tiangong class, it will inspire more young people to join the aerospace undertaken. As you said, China has already started the recruitment for the fourth batch of the um, Taekwondo's. And actually, they will recruit from different disciplines and also they will uh, also recruit some of the load experts from Macau and Hong Kong. And also we will recruit some of the engineers for the space station. And uh, you have to go through a lot of screening before you get qualified. Make sure you study hard and also do a lot of exercise. I believe in the near future, you will become one of us, and making sure that in the future you will also be able to step onto the space, and we are waiting for you in the space station. Your students, time flies, and that comes to the end of the Tiangong class. Thank you for three Taekwondo's for the excellent lecturing. So also, we would like to wish the crew of the Shenzhou 14 to complete the mission successfully. We are here waiting for you coming back in victory. Thank you. In October, we have spent this memorable time together, and soon Meng Tian lab module will be sent to space soon, and also we will witness the great moment for the completion of the construction of the China Space Station. We hope in the future you could create a better future for our space home. For our strong nation gave us opportunity to realize our dream. I hope all of you to work hard and pursue your dreams, making sure that you do your best to realize the Chinese dream. It is quite fortunate for us to live in such a great era. We hope that our journey is the sea of stars. Let's work together to create a brighter future. Flying to the space is always our dream, and we never give up exploring science. So that is the Tiangong class. See you next time. Thank you again for the Taiko Knots. Bye-bye.
天，我们通过天宫课堂揭开了问天实验舱神秘的面纱，也通过对控制变量法和模式植物的学习，对空间植物实验有了更好的认识。是的。除此之外呢，航天员老师还通过水层变暖、太空实验，向我们展示了微重力的设计。我们也通过航天员和科学家可以探索到地表的本采集任务，并且通过天体合作的努力，我们也通过航天员和科学家可以探索到地表的本采集任务，并且通过天体合作的努力，我们也通过航天员和科学家可以探索到地表的本采集任务，并且通过天体合作的努力，我们也通过航天员和科学家可以探索到地表的本采集任务，并且通过天体合作的努力，我们也通过航天员和科学家可以探索到地表的本采集任务，And also, we are getting ready to conquer all the challenges that will pose by the space. And soon, Mengtian Lab module will be launched soon, and it will also dock the Tianfeng module. And also, we will have a complex with Wentian and the Mengtian module. And in the Mengtian Lab module, it will have more experimental cabinets. We are quite looking forward for the launch of the Mengtian module. So everything we have done today is for a brighter future. And today we will complete the construction of the China Space Station, and this will become the largest space facilities in China. And I believe for the space. Space Station will become a key part for China to build itself into a major power in the aerospace. I believe for the CSS will help us to learn more about the origin and source of our life and unveil the mystery of the universe. And today marks the 30th anniversary of our manned space program. This also requires a lot of effort for our pioneers. And in the future, we will step for a brighter future. And I believe all of you will be part of the journey to the sea of stars. We need you for our future. In Devil, there's no end to unveil the mysteries of space. See you next time.